In this video, we will be discussing the Indus River Valley civilization. So the big questions you need to be able to answer after watching this video are first, how were the people of the Indus River Valley civilization influenced by their environment? And second, why is the Indus River Valley civilization so mysterious? So turning to that first question, how were the people of the Indus River Valley civilizations influenced by their environment? It's important to remember the role that rivers played in the formation of these first civilizations. For example, we talked about Mesopotamia and the importance of the Tigris and Euphrates River. In Egypt, the importance of the Nile River. And now we're focusing on the Indus River Valley Civilization, which was centered along the banks of the Indus River. So the obvious similarity in all three of these examples is the presence of a river to provide fertile soil, um, to provide good farmland. So the Indus River Valley Civilization, or the Harappan Civilization, developed along the Indus River, river in modern-day Pakistan and India in the region of South Asia. So it's really important in AP history that we start learning these various regions. So India, Pakistan is all part of the Indian subcontinent, which is sort of um, isolated by the presence of the Himalayan mountains. So we can see the Indus River Valley um, with the cities that form, cities like Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa. That's why sometimes it's referred to as the Harappan civilization. So the Indus River Valley floods unpredictably due to monsoons. Um, so occasionally you'll hear stories about flooding in Pakistan. So what is a monsoon? A monsoon is a seasonal wind that affects this region of the Indian Ocean Basin. And so during certain seasons, there'll be stronger winds, which bring more rain um, into this area. And therefore that causes the rivers to periodically flood. But oftentimes this is relatively unpredictable. So this makes the Indus River Valley more similar geographically to Mesopotamia um, with the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, which flooded um, uncontrollably and unpredictably. Okay, so the second big question we need to be able to answer is why is the Indus River Valley civilization so mysterious? Now, when archaeologists began excavating Indus River Valley civilization cities like Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa, they found a lot of very unique and curious items. So for example, they found these small tiny seals. They're like one inch by one inch. And they have this unusual kind of symbolic writing on them. They have these strange animals, some of which would be animals that are indigenous to that region, like the elephant, but then they, there's other animals like this, what appears to maybe be a unicorn down in the lower right hand side. And so it left the, these archaeologists with all sorts of questions about um, what the Indus River Valley Civilization Society was like. They also discovered these very unique sculptures, excellent art for that particular time, um, but it left a lot of questions like who are these people um, that are being depicted in, in these sorts of pieces. So one of the reasons why the Indus River Valley Civilization is so mysterious is because its writing is undeciphered. Um, the inscriptions for the Indus River Valley script tend to be small. They're located on these seals, which are, again, very tiny. And so there's, there tends to only be four, five, six characters long. And therefore, the researchers who have been trying to decipher the script don't have enough examples to be able to formulate patterns, um, to be able to decipher and decode the Indus River Valley script. So because we know they had a writing system, but we can't translate or can't decipher that writing, it makes it um, very difficult to draw some conclusions and to then support any kind of conclusions that you draw with um, some textual evidence. Now, one thing that we do know about the Indus River Valley civilization is we just described some of those seals were discovered in the Indus River Valley, but they also have been discovered as far away as Mesopotamia. So the conclusion you can obviously reach is these seals may have been used in economic activity. And ultimately, we can determine that the Indus River Valley civilization was, in fact, trading with the Mesopotamians. 
So the IRVC, or the Indus River Valley Civilization, traded with the Mesopotamians, as evidenced by these seals that are found in the Middle East. Now, we have no direct evidence of kings or rulers. We, we just don't know a lot about the structure of their state um, because we don't have any textual evidence to definitively determine what the, you know, whether there were kings, whether there were rulers, what kind of government did the Indus River Valley Civilization people set up. But we can sort of identify that they Indus River Valley people most likely had some sort of centralized planning, and that's because the cities were highly structured. Um, the streets were of uniform width. The streets all kind of formed at right angles to one another. Um, weren't, these cities weren't just kind of haphazardly created. And that suggests some sort of centralized power, some kind of centralized planning. You can also see it in the bricks. So the fact that all of the bricks are a uniform size, well, who made that determination that the bricks should be uniform in size? Um, so that suggests that there had to have been some kind of centralized planning or some type of government in the Indus River Valley civilization. Now, in terms of their social structure, again, we, we are kind of left with more questions than answers. We do know as a result of archaeology that there were differences in the size of the residents and the houses in cities like Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa, and that suggests differences in social class system, that there were people with more wealth and power and others with less wealth and power, This the creation of social hierarchy. We also know that there is small, intricate art, which suggests the presence of specialized workers that were creating very fine pottery, very fine sculptures, utilizing bronze and metallurgy. Now take a look at this. Um, in the middle of the city of Mohenjo-Daro, there's this, um, this structure. What does that look like? What if I did this? Put a little water in it. So this is called the Great Bath. And it, again, is located in the center of, of Mohenjo-Daro, this large city center. And so some conclusions that we may be able to reach or inferences we can reach about the Indus River Valley's cultural traditions is that they placed a high value on washing, on cleanliness. We also know this, uh, we do know this because they had the Great Bath, but we also know this because they had another very unique um, aspect to their city's infrastructure and that was anybody know what that is it's a little porta potty or a toilet which was connected to a fairly extensive sewer system which ran throughout the city now this is incredibly impressive um, the Indus River Valley civilization was creating sewer systems really hundreds, if not thousands of years before the next sewer systems were put in place in other cities around the world. So the importance of this high value of washing we can see still today in this region in later religious traditions like um, Hinduism where there's ritual purification where people go down to rivers like the Ganges rivers or the Indus rivers and they wash themselves and so we can see some of the cultural traditions that may have began in the Indus River Valley civilization eventually being passed down to our modern age. Now, one of the other mysterious things about the Indus River Valley civilization is that they disappeared mysteriously, almost overnight. So, when you're thinking about the collapse and fall of a civilization, what causes a civilization, or later on we'll talk about empires, to very rapidly collapse and fall? And so there's some obvious things that might come to mind, like the spread of disease, but when archaeologists started excavating these sites and they examined the bodies, they didn't find any evidence of disease. Another very common theory um, would be uh, invasion, warfare. So we talk about the theories for the Indus River Valley's sudden decline. One might be they were just invaded, they were conquered by an external group. Um, and there is evidence that there were some pastoral people sometimes referred to as the Aryans, sometimes referred to as the Indo-Europeans, who were from kind of Central Asia, who migrated into this region right around 1750 BCE. Now, the kind of problem with this theory is that 
there's evidence to suggest that this migration actually took place and it did happen after the decline and collapse of the Indus River Valley civilization. So another possible explanation might be um, the presence of natural disasters or earthquakes. This region is sitting on two different um, tectonic plates and so therefore you have that's the epicenter for many earthquakes. Um, but there's again not sufficient evidence maybe to support this theory, although there's possible evidence of it. Um, the theory that most um, historians that are examining this question today are, are sort of looking at the theory of climate change, that this region has some pretty dramatic shifts in its climate as a result of the monsoon winds, and there's some um, scientific evidence to suggest that the period where the Indus River Valley civilization collapsed corresponds to widespread drought in this region. And so when we're thinking about the um, what causes societies, civilizations to rise and ultimately to collapse, be aware of this factor, climate change, because it can lead to the rapid decline of civilizations as we see with the Indus River Valley civilization. All right, so as a result of watching, you should be able to answer these two big questions. So how are the people of the Indus River Valley civilization influenced by their environment? And why is the Indus River Valley civilization so mysterious? As always, thanks for watching. Indus River. In Egypt, the importance of the Nile River. And now we're focusing on the Indus River Valley civilization, which was centered along the banks of the Indus River. So the obvious similarity in all three of these examples is the presence of a river to provide fertile soil, um, to provide good farmland. So the Indus River Valley Civilization, or the Harappan Civilization, developed along the Indus River, river in modern-day Pakistan and India in the region of South Asia. So it's really important in AP history that we start learning these various regions. So India, Pakistan is all part of the Indian subcontinent, which is sort of um, isolated by the presence of the Himalayan mountains. So we can see the Indus River Valley um, with the cities that In this video, we will be discussing the Indus River Valley Civilization. So the big questions you need to be able to answer after watching this video are first, how were the people of the Indus River formed cities like Mohenjo-Daro and Harappa? That's why sometimes it's referred to as the Harappan Civilization. So the Indus River Valley floods unpredictably due to monsoons. Um, so occasionally you'll hear stories about flooding in Pakistan. So what is a monsoon? A monsoon is a seasonal wind that affects this region of the Indian Ocean Basin. And so Valley Civilization influenced by their environment. And second, why is the Indus River Valley Civilization so mysterious? So turning to that first question, how were the people of the Indus River Valley Civilizations influenced by their environment? It's important to remember the role that rivers played in the formation of these first civilizations. For example, we talked about Mesopotamia and the importance of the Tigris and Euphrates.